This is your diamond insight of variations in sanitation within schools. At last, authorities managing learning institutions can sigh in relief following the start of the first term and semester of 2024, even though it will be brief. Indeed, this gap created in the country's education sector because of the cholera pandemic is one that should never happen again in modern Zambia. Now, what we have observed as lessons commence are flattery comments by authorities of schools on what has been done to enhance public health, and true to their word, their soaps, washing basins, and equally water is running. However, the fact remains, there are inconsistencies in provision of good sanitation. Government must be cautious. Children are back in crowded spaces, and this will require a lot of supervision to ensure hygiene is adhered to at all times. And we know for a fact the pupil ratio outnumbers staff, and we anticipate within days the compliance to health guidelines will soon drop. We're not being pessimists, but merely making emphasis about the habits that play out in public institutions. For instance, a 10,000 litre tank installed in Kanyama compound for residents to access clean water amid cholera has never been operational for two months, all because of failure to allocate transport for a water bowser. It is such excuses by policymakers that cause junior officers to slacken and the nation is reportedly plunged in challenges that are avoidable and cholera is one of the reasons we are in this embarrassing chapter that has killed nearly a thousand of people. Merely recording a few cases of a waterborne disease does not mean the problem is over and this is why we urge government to monitor learning institutions and they should be adherents to the Public Health Act Cap 295 and the Food and Safety Act No. 7 of 2019 of the laws of Zambia. Just like during the early days of COVID-19, we need to keep playing as surf who will require extra vigilance and holding schools accountable at every level to stamp out cholera.